Welcome to the Campervan channel, the YouTube channel for all things Campervan. Now the classic models are really popular, but what are these old vehicles really like to live with? This is what the owners of Bay Windows think. This is uh, an early Bay VW Transporter, made in 1968 one of the very early uh, bay windows. It was made in the first, first six months that they started producing the, uh, the bay windows. So it's uh, relatively unusual in that it's got some of the features of the split screen van that they were probably using up bits from bin, from parts bins uh, in order to, to finish them off. And there were only, they're only one year parts on, on some of the parts on the van, yeah. This is a Viking T2, it's Molly. So we kept the original name from the uh, people that had it before. Just thought it felt it rude to change. It suits Molly. Uh, she suits Molly, sorry. Uh, so she's a she. Um, and yeah, she's, she's been brilliant for us. It's not pristine like you'll see all the other vans, but this is, this is our family vehicle. So this is our family holiday vehicle in the summer. Uh, and we run it and run it and run it. So yeah. I've had uh, three over the years, yes, yeah, over the last 30 odd years now. All bay yes. windows? All bay windows. This is a Westphalia conversion, so one that I really did, really did like when I saw it, yeah. I must admit, my purchases have all tended to be impulse purchases. When we first bought the first one, didn't have any idea at all what we were buying, what we were letting ourselves in for. We obviously had a very tough life, there were holes in the floor, you could see the road uh, through the floor as you move. It wasn't the safest vehicle on the road at the time. And also the panels on the doors were seriously rotted. So there was so much work needed to do into that van. In the end, the, the, the front axle was what, what failed and uh, it, I sold it onto someone who was hopefully gonna be able to make something of it. Modern day purchasing is very much based on research, looking online, seeing what's available. And as lots and lots of people will always say, don't jump for the first van you see. Go and have a look and explain to the, per the, the seller that you're, you're doing research so that they understand that you, you're probably not going to make a decision there and then, like I did. It's quite difficult to um, find one that's uh, worth the effort because you see them on uh, internet, you see them on marketplaces and they look a real good bargain but you, when you go and have a look at it you're looking underneath, you're looking at the rust, you're, you're looking at everything. Uh, it's always good to have someone competent with you as well to go and have a look at it um, because you could be buying a problem uh, vehicle that will cost you more money than it's worth. Don't be shy about being a bit organised about it. Making a list in your head of what it is that you really want. Are you worried about having a left-hand drive? This is a left-hand drive van. How big do you want the bed to be? What kind of conversion do you want? Do you want something that looks quite modern? What kind of engine do you want? Do you want something that's as original as possible or uh, a replacement engine with more capacity and more speed? If you're buying a van from this country, how much welding has been required? How many of the panels have been replaced and who's done the replacing? Um, is it someone who essentially is, has learned how to do it properly or is it someone who's done it themselves? Not to say there's anything wrong with someone who's done it themselves selling a van on at all. Um, some DIYers are some of the most experienced and knowledgeable people in, in, in the world of VWs, but when you're buying you need to know that the person who's been doing the restoration knew what they were doing. This van is uh, 53 years old. There's always going to be an issue where rust, rust will begin to bubble up somewhere on it. You have to accept that that's going to be part of it. Rust will happen on it, it's, it's guaranteed. But you can have treatments. You can do treatments on the bottom of the van, you can do it on the uh, side, as long as you're looking after it. Do as much as you can to alleviate the problems of rust, but don't expect that you're going to eradicate them forever. If you're owning a van for a number of years, you'll do things over and over just to keep it, keep it on the road, keep it uh, usable and safe. Because of its age, you don't have to have it MOT'd, but I do because I want to know it's safe for my family uh, and to go on the road realistically for everyone else as well. 
With this van, I have been extremely fortunate in that um, I was told, and I do believe that when I bought it, it had required no welding at all, which was, for its age, was almost unheard of. So that was a massive tick on the list of things you're looking for in a van. A minimum amount of repair is a huge one. The good thing about these vans is, is that they carried on making parts for them for years and years and years. Body panels are still available. There are loads of specialist suppliers out there. The prices are not extortionate. The cost is in getting them fitted to the van. If you've got the skills to do that, you're not going to have to spend so much. You can find parts, you can find second-hand parts at shows uh, and realise that you're looking for something, you're looking for a new exhaust. Come along, have a look. Do a bit of research and a lot of the people are really friendly to sell you the parts uh, and they'll tell you exactly what you need and bring a few photos uh, and it just really helps, uh, especially if you've not got the massive pot of money. This van has a 1600 Type 1 engine, it's known as. This van's got the original engine in. The engine does what it says on the tin. Uh, it, it pushes a, a one-ton van along at 55 miles an hour on the level. And it, it, uh, it, it, it does that job day in, day out, as long as you look after it. I have had uh, issues with it, just not running correctly. Missing beats, cutting out uh, as we start off. So I've tuned it a bit, uh, just to sort it out a little bit. A little screwdriver, get the uh, throttle a bit tighter, uh, and yeah, sort of solve the issue. But um, also cleaning it out, that, that's the main thing that I keep doing and changing the oil. I've had some minor issues with it. It didn't feel minor at the time when it's raining and it's stopped. But um, in terms of the comparison with a modern day engine, um, it was relatively simple to diagnose what the problem was, get the part and get it repaired. Like the bodywork, the engines are relatively straightforward to get replacement parts for. Keep the oil changed, it just keep on top of things because the engine will look after you if you look after it. It requires a lot more maintenance in terms of oil changes, at least every 3,000 miles. Some modern cars can do 20 times that mileage before they need an oil change. And these really do respond well to being looked after. You can watch videos on the internet to see what you can do yourself as well. The basics of looking after it, uh, taking the carburetor out, cleaning the carburetor, that sort of stuff can, if, as long as you're competent enough to watch a video to do it, you'll be doing it and all you'll need is a scar, uh, like a small spanner and a st star screwdriver and you can do it. There are some good courses out there to learn how to do things like that, how to adjust the, the rocker arms and things, that those regular things that you need to keep on top of. I did a, a, a day's course last year, just last year. I owned the van for years and years but it's, you can still learn more. One of the things not to expect is to get anywhere quickly. You're moving everything that you need for a weekend or a week away in a van that is um, relatively low powered compared to a modern vehicle. It's not going to go anywhere fast. I think you also got to remember that the space in the vans is not uh, not huge at all. So if there's a family, if you've got a family, you're going to need some external space and you're going to need a bit of rainproofing. So you need an awning or a gazebo or somewhere where you can sit. Um, you can't always expect all of you to be crowded in the van all the time, or you will get claustrophobic. We fell on a really good bargain with it uh, and I've loved it ever since. The design of the van I think is neither strongly feminine or masculine, so it's pretty gender neutral, everybody loves the van, there's no specific kind of VW fan. I think they just make people happy. People do see these vans and give you a wave and give you a thumbs up and perhaps the people behind you who are itching to get past aren't quite, quite so sympathetic sometimes but hey that's all part of being in a, in a van and, and loving van life. <laughs>